Please now enter into a time of confession and forgiveness with me. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin together. Have mercy on us, gracious God. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Congratulations, graduates. This is such an exciting day for Holy Spirit as we celebrate this great accomplishment in your life. I'm sorry I cannot be there in person with you. I'm at a continuing education event that's been on the books for over a year. But I did want you to know that you're in my prayers today and this month as you graduate. Times like this can make us old people nostalgic. Behold this high school senior picture of yours truly. Take it in, the suit color, the hair. I know, too awesome for words, right? I couldn't wait to be free of the chains of high school, free to explore the next stage of my life. This is a wonderful time for you. It will also be a challenging time for you. Whether you head off to college, enter military service, or begin full-time work, you will enjoy incredible opportunities and face difficult life choices. Please hear this as you take this next step. You are loved. This community of faith has watched you grow and mature, and we can't wait to see what you do next. We are on your team as you discover more of God's plan for you. You always have a place here and we hope you'll come visit us often. Know that we care about you, and as you sort things out, we are here for you through all your successes and failures. Most importantly, know that this is also true of God. God will always be no further away than a prayer or another Christian brother or sister. Congratulations again. God loves you, and so do I.
Today's Gospel reading is from Matthew in the 6th chapter. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life. And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given you as well. Please pray with me. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the ability to come here into your presence this day. Be with us as we hear your word. May it strengthen us and embolden us to go out into the world, proclaiming the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. I think it's appropriate that this is part two in our newest sermon series, the ABCs of Following Jesus, and it's all about worship. One of the key things that shows us you're a follower of Jesus is what you're doing right now. So I think then I'll start with a question. What brings you here this morning? No, really. Why are you here? If we're going to talk about worship and its effect on the walk of a Christ follower, I think it's important to know why we're here. A lot of us will give similar answers, but many of us will have our own specific reasons for why we might be here. Maybe you love the music. The sounds and words move us to certain emotions and understanding of who God is. 
or you love the feeling of community when you gather here or at home. Seeing familiar faces and the conversations with friends, both new and old. Maybe it's hearing the scriptures, being reminded of God's word and the stories with their incredible promises that matter so much to us all. Maybe it's coming to communion, coming to this table and the incredible cosmic meal with its assurances of forgiveness and new life. There's even a slight chance that the sermons and the preachers who deliver them are what bring you back. Okay, that last one is probably a little selfish on my part, but the point still kind of stands. We all come with different likes, hopes, and expectations for how this time and space is going to look and feel. There are different styles of worship. Here we have our more contemporary flavor of worship. We have more traditional styles of worship. And then we get into the added complexity of what it looks like to take that from in-person live events to pre-recorded digital spaces like these ones. I could all spend all the time we have here talking about the how of worship. Styles of prayers and music. Even the differences in why pastors sometimes wear the big white robes and sometimes just the funny shirt with the white collar or why at some churches just a pair of jeans and a fashionable shirt is enough. Maybe I could talk about, for a good long time, about how important the different parts of our worship services are and what they mean. See, even our more contemporary services follow an ancient pattern. Maybe that would interest you. Maybe. Maybe we could focus on the biggest single part of the Sunday service, coming to the table for communion. That would be great, right? I suppose I could have gone down any of those paths. I could probably even do a four to six part series of preaching just on worship. See, while many of you have been here in person at our contemporary services or seen our worship videos online and seen me play either the bass or the guitar with our worship team, you may not know that I consider my early years of playing with the band at my home church my start in ministry. Worship has mattered to me so much for so long. I could go on for hours just about what we do here on a Sunday morning or record on a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> it's that important. And I've invested a lot of time and energy over the years to understand it as best I can. But rather than get into the weeds on so many of those little details, hoping to get every little theological nugget right about all of the things and cram them into one sermon, I think if we look at today's scripture reading, this next excerpt from the Sermon on the Mount, we might get closer to an understanding of what it is that this worship time is about and what it can do and be for us. See, in this scripture, Jesus tells us not to worry. Not to worry about so many of the little things that get in the way of us being who we are made, called, and meant to be. Jesus says, don't worry about your life and body. Don't worry about what you'll eat or drink. Don't even worry about what you'll wear. And it's not that we shouldn't worry about it because it's not important, because these are definitely things that do matter to us in a way. That God has already got all of that handled for each and every one of us. See, if there's one constant in our church and faith background, it's that when we come to worship, either in person or online, that it's, it's not about us. Trends in style and approach may change, but this is all about God. It's not about what it looks like, sounds like, smells like. It's not about what we like or dislike. Our actions on Sunday morning don't make us any more acceptable or pleasing to God. Nothing we sing, shout, dance, confess, hear, or respond to can change who God is. The truth is, worship has always been about what God has done, is doing, and is going to do for us and for the world. 
When we confess our sins, we hear that God has already forgiven us. When we hear God's word, the good news and gospel of Jesus, we hear of that life, death, and resurrection of the one who does not come to condemn, but to save. When we gather at the table, Jesus shows up. Not because of our worthiness, not because of any magic words that pastors get up and speak, but because Jesus promises to meet us there and be at that table. And we go out from this place, sent into the world to share that good news. It's not anything we can do to get it right, but the Holy Spirit that goes with us is there to guide our hearts and minds and voices because of what Jesus promised his disciples. This time and place isn't about what we do, what the pastors, the band, the choir leaders, the many volunteers are doing. Also, hey, this is a great time to recognize just how many people it takes to make worship happen. All of those folks I already said, plus greeters, ushers, communion assistants, musicians, singers, audiovisual technicians, camera operators, film editors. But no, it's not just about that. It's about setting aside ourselves, our worries, our fears, our doubts, our insecurities, and placing ourselves entirely in the hands of the one who made all of creation. We are simply here to respond to that truth that we have heard. It ain't about us. This is the time when we get to let go. Let go of those things that we spend so much time focusing our attention on. We get to enter into God's presence in this very real way. Let our guard down and just be. If you have anything on your heart or mind, something that is just keeping you bogged down and worried. I've got some great news for you today. I'm glad you brought it with you. Lay it down here. God does tell us to bring our very best, but he also calls us to cast our fears and anxieties onto him. If you're ready, come here. Come with your doubts, your fears, your worries. Put them in the hands of the one who's already done all the work for you. You can't add a year to your life, not even one hour or even one second of your life by holding on to your worry. But your life can be transformed in the briefest instant if you come here ready to let it go, to let God be God and to let him take over. See, not just when we are gathered here together in person or online, but every day when we know that God has done it all for us. That's how we can worship God, even when we aren't in worship. Every time we drop those worries and fears at his table and at the foot of the cross, we proclaim, and it's not us who has to get it all right. God's already got this in his incredible hands. Every time we declare with the loudest voice that God has got this better than I ever could, that's true worship. That's what worship is about. It's not about the music. It's not about the preaching. It's not even about what you say or do while you're here. How confessionally you repent of your sins. How well you remember those prayers you were taught long ago. How composed you look as you come to the table. How well you can follow the songs and the hymns. The rhythm of your clapping along to the music. Your Dancing with joy it is good news. Your hands raised in surrender or how reverently you pray through the prayers. No. This time and space are about God. That God who created you in love, that son who saved you in his mercy, and that spirit that sends you from this place to teach others to come. Come and be with God and let the rest go. Come and worship. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please pray with me. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you sent your apostles to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ. Restore all people who cry to you for help. We pray especially for Mason, Mike, Cindy, Doug, and all those who we name before you now. Turn their mourning into dancing, clothe them with joy, and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. Lord God, be with the people of Ukraine and all those who experience violence. Give them peace, give them resolve, give them wisdom to make solid and good choices for the benefit of all. Be also among those people who seek to do harm, who use force to achieve their goals. Help them to see that your way, the way of peace, is the one that is best for all people. God, join our voices with angels, creatures, and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessing and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in our worship. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
Thank you again for joining us today. I do have a few announcements for you. On Mother's Day, May the 8th, we are hosting a film crew that will be here to help capture our worship services and freshen up our website and digital media spaces. We could love to see everyone there with an enthusiasm for taking part in worship. This will really help us to continue to improve our digital outreach so that more people here can connect with us to hear good news in Palm Beach County. Our next announcement, on May the 15th, you're invited to an afternoon of fellowship, hors d'oeuvres, and live jazz in our beautiful honor garden. Join us at one o'clock that day as we enjoy our beautiful garden and time with each other. Enjoy live music from the Great American Songbook provided by members of Doctrine, our contemporary worship team. Family Beach Day 2022. Come join his kids and Soul Fire families for a day at the beach. We're meeting and parking at Ocean View United Methodist Church in a quick crossing of the street, and that's where it will all happen. Swim, laugh, eat, bask in the sun, and build your faith-based friendships. Lunch will be provided, and that's May the 22nd at 1230 in the afternoon. You're invited to join the Autumn Light Ministry May the 24th at 4 in the afternoon as we welcome Eton Boritzer and an exploration of the meaning of mindfulness along with a guided practice session. Eaton will explain the general principles of mindfulness and then let an easy seated meditation. They will meet here in our sanctuary. Please RSVP online. Our weekly email newsletter and our website are both filled with opportunities for you to gather with other people here at the church and to serve each other and our community. Be sure to check both for the ways that you can connect with the ministries of Holy Spirit Lutheran Church.